Hello, my name is Patrick Bourne. I'm a Cisco Technical Marketing Engineer for SPA SIP Endpoints. In this presentation, I'm going to share with you details of the uh, SPA 500 series IP phone boot process, and in particular the zero touch boot process. The first part of a phone's boot process is to detect its power source. So in the event of it receiving power over Ethernet, the phone takes power from the Cat5 cable connected. The phone then performs a power on self test, then the Cisco discovery protocol takes place, then the VLAN trunking protocol runs, and then finally the dynamic host configuration protocol starts up. Because of the Cisco discovery protocol, the phone will automatically insert itself onto the correct VLAN for voice and the DHCP discover on the appropriate VLAN. DHCP options affect the way the phone boots up. If the phone gets only an IP address or if it gets option 66 which could be a TFTP server's IP address, option 159 which would be a server's IP address, option 160 which could be a server's name, or option 150. So here step by step the phone's boot process. The top left corner here we have a phone that's set at factory default to SPA 504 in this example and we've got a DHCP server in this case I'm using this services ready platform down here in the bottom right we've got a service provider provisioning cloud we've got a bunch of servers and basically all the servers are doing are holding the phone's configuration information well, step one power is applied the power on self test runs and then the phone, the phone performs a Cisco discovery protocol so this is an actual output from a Wireshark trace. So you can see what the Cisco Discovery Protocol looks like. It shows you the phone software version, the phone's model number, and the VLAN that the, that the uh, phone is querying on. Next step, the phone sends out a DHCP Discover on, on the appropriate VLAN. And again, here's the Wireshark trace of it. So you'll see the phone's MAC address and it's performing a DHCP discover and it's requesting an address that's the address it had last time. The default host name is SEP and then the phone's MAC address and its vendor class ID is a Cisco SPA 504G. Next step, the DHCP server, as I said in this example, it's the uh, services ready platform, the SRP500. It sends an offer. The example in this offer is a DHCP option 66. In its essence, it's saying your IP address is going to be this, your TFTP or insert your protocol of your choice. Server's IP address is going to be, gives it. It could be the same device, it could point to a cloud, it doesn't really matter where it is or which protocol it's going to use. And that's what the DHCP offer looks like. Of importance is down here, option 66, TFTP server name, and it's given it an IP address. Next step, the phone receives DHCP offer and immediately performs a GET request using the protocol that has been directed to use. So in this example, I'm showing it with TFTP because it's just a lot easier to see. A factory default phone profile rule is set to spa.psn.cfg that resolves to slash spa 504g.cfg in the event of a spa 504g phone. It's very important that you notice there's a slash, that means it's an absolute path, you need that path in, on your TFTP server. And this is what the read request looks like. You'll notice it's looking for the absolute path and then the file name. Next step, the DHCP server sends the spa 504g.cfg file to the phone as requested. The phone receives it in its entirety and then it immediately loads it. Looking at the spa 504g.cfg, it's a very simple file. It's just a flat profile header and, and trailer and it says resync on reset yes. Resync periodic is 10 seconds. You can make this any size you like. I just do it short in this particular file so I don't have to wait for a long time to watch it. And then the profile rule. In this case, I'm giving it a protocol to use and I'm giving it a path. I could use a server name so it could uh, resolve this with DNS if I preferred. And then I'm telling it to look for the prefix of SPA and then the phone's MAC address.xml. I can name this file anything I want. Next step, the phone now performs the GET request based on the uh, URL and, and the information I gave it. And in this case, it goes off net into the cloud requests the information from the service, provi service provider provisioning cloud and that's 
doing a GET request. Notice uh, I showed you an HTTPS GET, but I'm actually showing you a TFTP because, of course, HTTPS is encrypted and there's nothing interesting to see in that. The provisioning servers in the cloud respond. What I'm not showing here, by the way, with these asterisks up here between after 5 and after 8, is that the phone joins a multicast group. It also attempts to switch, it, it attempts many times through the boot process to switch out of SIP mode into SPCP mode, that, that's a version of Skinny, because this, these phones uh, work with the UC500 family, which or SPCP by default. So the files that you'll notice the phone looking for constantly is sep.mac.cnf.xml and xml default.psn.cnf.xml and also uh, the phone will request slash cisco dollar pn dollar ma dot cfg you can use this last name if you prefer if you don't want to use this uh, dual process where the phone first requests its model number and then you load it to tell it to look for a mac address this could be a one stage boot process where here's the phone model number and there's its mac so you could have that on your provisioning server the phone would do one request for that get the information and immediately boot up and and um, activate those settings if you prefer. So the phone receives this XML configuration file from the provisioning server and then it loads it. So here's an example of the, f of the file. So you'll notice there's the preamble and there's the postamble. So the first thing I have here is an upgrade rule. So I'm saying if the software version is not equal to 7.4.4 which is the current GA version, use the following protocol and you can use any protocol you prefer. This, this server found this file. So if this evaluates to true, the first thing the phone will do once it's got the rest of its configuration is will actually upgrade its firmware. The phone has a report rule so it'll send me its configuration and here's the list of DHCP options that the phone will accept and then the order that it will run them. So it first tries 66 then 160, 159 and 150. Here's the protocol of choice. I'm setting up a time protocol, a time zone I'm telling it to uh, resync after two minutes, this is in seconds. In the event of an error, wait 300 seconds. Upgrade enabled, yes, so that means this rule will apply. I'm just giving the phone a name and an example of my provisioning server, an example of a name that could be whatever you prefer, a user ID, password, authentication, and auth ID if you have. So the phone loads that information and then it reboots. When it comes up it registers based on its loaded configuration and it's ready for calls. This entire process takes less than three minutes including the software download and the multiple reboots.